So welcome back everybody, this is John with Swing Fit. So have you recently bought a driver to only find out that it's just not going as far as your previous gamer? No matter what you try, you just feel that you're leaving something in the tank and you're definitely leaving those yards out on the golf course. If that sounds like you, then today is a great day because not only is it a four minute Thursday where we're gonna give you the best advice in the shortest period of time possible, but we're also gonna help you understand how to find a sweet spot in the driver. And believe me, finding a sweet spot is critical with helping you get maximum ball speed to reclaim some of those missing yards. So without further ado, let's jump in. So before we dive into today's topic, I do want to take a quick second to welcome any new viewers to the channel. So if this happens to be your first time, or if you're just passing through and want to learn more about the club fitting process, I mean really gain a better understanding of why a club fitter might do certain things during the fit process in order to change the shot outcome, I can promise you, you are in the right place. Now before we get too deep, I do want to take a quick second to make sure we're on the same page because center of gravity isn't defined as a specific point on the driver face, right? It's actually defined as where is the CG location in the center of the golf club, right? So as you look at these two images here, what I mean by that is, is, is that somewhere between the face and the back of the driver is gonna be the CG location, right? And then somewhere between the top of the crown and the bottom sole part of the club is gonna be kind of like the middle point. And where those two lines intersect will be the CG locations. And once again, sometimes it's not always directly in the middle of that driver. Sometimes it may favor the heel, sometimes it may favor the toe, sometimes Sometimes it can actually be a little higher or lower and what will influence that is where is that weight distributed in that club head design itself. As we all know, low spin drivers will have more mass closer towards a face and all that does is bring that CG down and sometimes it can actually bring it a little towards a heel depending on if that is more of a heel bias weighting system setup or if it's more of a toe bias weighting setup. And you know, once again, manufacturers have the ability to specifically put where that mass is located and that will move that CG location once again, and you know, but how do you define that? And unless you have like a fancy tool like this, where you can actually define where that CG location is, you know what, it's almost next to impossible unless you know what to look for. So that's what we're gonna do now. Now as a quick disclaimer, this isn't a full blown fitting session. So we're not gonna be swapping out any components or making any changes here, other than that of just optimizing the current setup. Customers currently rocking this bad boy right here. It's the Sim 2 Max driver, the 10.5 version with the stock Auto La Rogue shaft. Now, when we take a look at the stand pattern, you might be from the mindset that is that is exactly where we wanna live, right? We've been told north of the equator, center face, nice tight grouping, that's where the sweet spot is. Heck, even the manufacturer has gone as far to put a little big X in the middle of every single driver, so that's gotta be where we wanna strike the ball. But that's only true if that is exactly where the CG location is. And you know, I am here to tell you that every single driver its CG location will be a little different and it all depends upon where the mass is distributed in the head. So just take a look at this picture. When I overlay the TaylorMade Sim Max 2 driver, look at the CG location. Look how off center we are. It actually favors a little south and towards a toe and there's no way we're gonna help the customer get maximum energy transfer living in the top part of this driver head. So we gotta change that up. So let's take a look at the numbers to see what we can do. And when I look at the input of 98 mile an hour and a max efficiency of 1.41, I know there's something going on. Is it the gear or is it delivery? And here the AOA tells me exactly that delivery is probably 80 to 90% of the problem. Customer's hitting down on it, right? And the explanation is, is if you hit down, you're gonna be more susceptible to hit higher in the face. And that just means, you know, in order to move a you know, strike down, you just need to almost kind of feel like 
you're hitting up on the ball. So that's a seed I planted with the customer, right? And that's going to help the delivery, the technique side. Now, in order to shift that strike a little towards the toe, a couple schools of thought could be here. We can change the swing weight, or we can actually just turn loft down to open up the face to see if we can actually move that strike point a little out towards the toe. So those are the two things that we're going to do here. Just optimize the customer's current gamer and see if we can get a different result. So let's take a look at this stamp pattern and no question, take a look, right? See how tighter we are, a little bit lower. I mean, that's nice and tight. And look at the overlay here. We're directly stacked behind the CG location and you know, the numbers has got to support it, right? So knowing that we should see a spike in ball speed. So let's take a look. So sure enough, we went from 135 to 142. That's seven mile an hour ball speed spike just by stacking that CG behind the strike point, right? Move that strike point directly in line of where that sweet spot is. And now let's take a look at the delivery side because truth be told, customer is actually swinging the club a little bit faster. Why? Because he's actually hitting up on it, right? Now, instead of feeling like he's hitting down a descending blow, he's actually clearing his hips and he's squaring the club up with his body and he's actually generating a little bit more club head speed. But once again, you know, two to three mile an hour of input gain netted a seven mile an hour output gain. So that's pretty, pretty huge. But take a look at the carry numbers here, guys. This is the tail of the tape. Current gamer, no other changes other than one seed that we planted to hit up and we opened that face up to net an additional 15, 16 yards of carry helping the customer find 260 total. I mean, this is what club fitting is all about and understanding where that sweet spot is and how a club fitter can potentially just help you make a couple small tweaks in order to find that sweet spot can be the difference maker in order to help you reclaim some of those missing yards. So guys, in closing, we truly hope you found value in this information we share with you today. And just like in tonight's video, sometimes it's just about optimization. We don't always have to sell you something shiny and new in order to change the shot outcome. We just have to help you understand what's going on with the ball once it leaves the club face and your club fitter can be your best resource to help you, you know, parse through that information. So guys, if you have any questions or comments, do me a favor, leave them in the remarks below. And until next week, don't forget to take a look at one of these videos over here because there's probably a couple golden nuggets that just might help you get your game back pointed in the right direction. So until next week, thanks for watching.